Please be advised that Little Miss Recap contains adult language. Hearing Austin talk about you know, his relationship with Becca, it's making me a little jealous. I'm not sure exactly why Claire and I are progressing slower than the other couples, but it does make me curious as to maybe why Claire and I are struggling to engage you know, intimately. <laughs> Welcome to Little Miss Recap, the podcast where Stephanie just dropped the C word about five seconds ago and I can't stop laughing. I dropped it about myself, okay? She did. She did. She admitted that she's cranky today and maybe even the C word. Oh, I'm totally the C word and I'm fine with it. It is what it which, is. Which longtime listeners will know, I cannot say. I physically cannot say it. And it's truly one of my favorite words. Oh, not, Amanda like, had to like walk me through saying it and forced me to say it one episode. Really? And I, I can't. Mm-hmm. Oh, can't I say it. it all the time. I mean, I'm also I say trashy. See you next Tuesday. No, it's cunt. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> no. Um, Amanda texts me about Sister Wives, which I haven't seen yet uh-huh. for next week, and said, Robin is a real see you next Tuesday <gasps> in this upcoming episode. So looking Ooh. forward to this Ooh, one. Oh, I can't mm-hmm. eat. I can't mm-hmm. eat Watch that, the- guys. If you're if you're listening to Sister Wives or if you're watching Sister Wives, that will be on our paid feeds, and I suggest you jump over there and you listen because we talk so much talk. It's so great. Okay. I'm kind of obsessed with Sister Wives right now. Oh my god, dude! You have no idea. I spent like I had drawn drawn <laughs> on a piece of paper the table setting of who was sitting where. For the tape, for the, for Isabel's going away dinner. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) Because I just look for clues in everything. I don't know. It's, it's, it's sort of taken up the space in my life that, um, Game of Thrones left, you know, Game of Thrones left Okay. and Sister Wise filled that space. Hmm. All right. You know, it's, it's still, we're still battling for Westeros. It's still happening. Who will be on the throne? Will it be Robin? Will it be Christine? We don't know. Christine will always be on my throne. Mm. Robin, is Robin Joffrey or is Robin Cersei Lannister? Robin's a cunt. (laughs) (laughs) I hate you. All right, guys, we're talking Married at First Sight, Season 17, Episode 5. I'm fresh off my bang trip, so I'm feeling refreshed. I know. That's why this is late. Because Timmy and I scooted away to the Bahamas literally for two days and scooted home. I know. I love when that I say so scooted, much. When I say scooted, I mean spent 16 hours in an airport uh, <laughs> on three different God, flights. But anyway. Crazy. So no. we are here. These guys are going to Cancun, I believe. And it's uh, Take Me Down to Paradise City is the name of the episode. Where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Oh, won't you please well, won't take, you me please home? take me home? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Um, soundtrack of our youth, man. For real. Um, Steph, did you know that eight bold signals singles took a leap of faith in order to find love? Did you know that? Did they? With the help of experts or on their own? No, on their own. On their own. There are no help of experts. Oof, that's tough. That's tough. All right. So, as usual, guys, Stephanie has notes on some couples. I have notes on the others. We're gonna jump right in. And we're going to start with this little group scene that we have. They're, they're, again, they're in Cancun. We have this little group scene. They all get together at the hotel. They're talking about whether or not they want to have sex with each other. Okay. Because okay. that's what you do. You sit together and talk about how your intimacy is growing. So weird. But would so you, weird. like, but then I think maybe you do talk, like maybe no. you would. You don't think? No. No? No. Okay. You know I'm a prude. I know. I don't even understand you. I am not going to talk about this stuff. I don't understand you at all. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. All right. So, so Timmy ahead. and I, who knows what's going on in that bedroom? We could be doing the wildest shit on I, earth. No one would you know. would never know, or it could be the lamest shit on earth, and no one would ever know. Huh. All right. You might know after a couple of well, bottles I would of wine. Hope so. <laughs> but no one else would know. <laughs> Oh, okay. Lordy. So, right. here are my takeaways Orion and Lauren are getting along perfectly. Mm hmm. I mean, they just, everything is smooth sailing so far. So far. Emily is horny. Horny. 
20. She so here's what I've decided about Emily. Mm, go. My observation is that she's like the 13 year old girl that's pretending to be a grown up. Mm. Like everything to okay. her is just like funny and pretend and you mean funny silly and like <laughs> so you know but you do a good emily I we do. have wrong couples here because you do a good emily mm-hmm. so and like at one point she was saying something but i'm gonna have to stop you from doing it because i'm gonna throw my i know computer up i know but okay. she does she reminds me of like that girl that just is pretending to be older she's so fucking yeah. immature and i just i can't deal with her um, Cam is a pain in the ass, and he says Claire is handling it well. Yes. And by the He's way, when we, were in the Bahamas, when we were in the Bahamas, the elevator was like in a British woman's voice. <gasps> really? Going down. Yeah, that kind of thing. Oh. And so I had to do my hackneyed, real bad British accent mm. all the time. I'd be like, hey, you're going down. <laughs> we're going to shove you down into the quarters. Like, you know, just being oh, ridiculous. And God. Timmy was like, I hate your guts. Okay. Yeah. Austin and Becca are like, we nailed it, dude. They did. Like, we are, this is happening. And then we get the scariest <laughs> confessional ever from Cam. Aww. The camera's real close up to him. I have the video of this. I'm going to put it in the group. The group is Backdoor Friends, if you haven't heard or yes. you're not in there for some reason. Cam is like, I'm a little bit jealous of Austin. And I'm going to always do Cam as British I know. 19th century ghost. Okay? I know. <laughs> That's just how it's it happening. I understand he's Australian. I know there's a difference. He's news from New Zealand. He's he's a New Zealander. There is a difference. I understand this. Yes. I'm just going to real quick just do this we're little just, part. We're okay? just going to be part. us. That's it. Mm-hmm. So Cam's like... I want to stab Austin in the throat when he talks about his relationship with Becca because Claire won't let me touch her. Like, he gets real intense in this confessional. And I said to you, my opinion has changed on him. Now, you remember last week I said he's a fake nice guy. Mm -hmm. He's trying to be nice, but there's something evil under him. Now I feel like he's a serial killer. I'm still not feeling those things. Dude, I there's something about him that has me uneasy. I know, I'm uneasy and I'm hoping that I'm hoping that you're wrong because, I'm like, hoping you're wrong too, which I usually am, ninety percent of the time. There's something about him. I I hear you, and I mm-hmm. acknowledge what you're seeing because I see it too. I just don't. I'm not getting the vibe of like. I don't think he's an asshole. I just think okay. he's emotionally immature, maybe. No, I don't even know if that's it. I don't know what it okay. is. I just think he's not very good at expressing himself. But th- I have to take into consideration, too, he has said from the very beginning that he needs physical touch. Yeah, and he keeps saying that over and over and over again. <laughs> and he, like, but I don't see her trying to meet him in the middle anywhere. I have a new take on her too. We'll talk mm-hmm. about that later okay. when okay. we get to her. Okay. So now we're going to scoot over to Emily and Brennan. Do, 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 do. Scoot over there. Oh, you coming over to see me? Oh, yeah. so romantical. So Emily fell last night, guys. She hurt her hand and it's pretty bad. Do you think she and was drunk? A hundred and ten percent, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's not even a question. It's how drunk was she is the question. So they were in the shower together and she stepped out to go get some beer. And this was a total move I would do. And (laughs) slipped and fell and hurt her wrist. Like this. Guys, I went, you all know I've been on the blood pressure journey. Okay. I get to the resort in the Bahamas. It's a Sunday morning. (sighs) I don't have my blood pressure medicine. Forgot it. I get the text. I forgot (sighs) my blood pressure medication. You and I like was like, my... are you fucking kidding me? How? Of you all were like things. my Dr. Fauci. Like, I was like, help me, help me, help me. <laughs> and you were trying to guide me through this remotely. <laughs> and in typical Fauci fashion, I don't know that I did very well. <laughs> you you did. You did. You were You were supportive, and I love you. I love you. Okay. And I'm glad so you they didn't talk die. About- 
They talk about money and they talk about, oh, tell everyone what I told you when I thought I was going to die. What was the text? I forget. I said, if I die, Timmy is not allowed to Oh, remarry. right. And I was he like. He needs to mourn me forever. And of course he will. But, but okay. what did I say? You're going to, he's going to die first. Yeah. And then we're going to live out our golden girl's dream. And we're going to live out our golden girl's dream. Then you said, I'm going to die an old lady in my bed, very much like the Titanic lady. Right. Well, actually, what I really said was, don't worry, you're going to, you and I are going to grow old together and I will throw your ashes on that whale from the side of a boat, like the old lady in Titanic. And I will go, oh, when I toss the ashes onto the whale and you said, does that mean that then I could just go back down into my cabin and die? And I mm-hmm, said, yeah, mm-hmm. that's exactly what's going to happen. Okay. We're right. sickos. I'm a sicko. So they talk about money and they talk about being a power couple. And we learn from Brennan that like his mom has always worked. So he fully supports Emily being a, a working person mm-hmm. as he should. Mm-hmm. And he says he wants to build their legacy. Power couple, power couple. Mm. And he says he stores and stashes his money and she just doesn't understand this. <laughs> She's like... I don't know where my money goes. I'm always buying like, you know, shoes and tumblers and I have to pay to have that blue check mark by my TikTok. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know where the money's going. And I like spending money, but Mm -hmm. I'm not really Mm -hmm. good with math. So I can't have you do it. On on behalf of everyone listening, I need you to stop doing it. All right. Sorry. Listen, can I do crap? You are a master at it. it. (laughs) You are the master at doing this. We all applaud your talent. You sound amazing just like her. I need you to stop doing it. All right. God. Jesus. Remember that the next time you pull out a friggin' Mm -hmm. I don't know, Wilford Brimley. Any accent (laughs) that I do terrible? (laughs) So she's like, I just like doing what I want when I want to do it. And I have no idea where my money goes. And he says, I would like to live below our means. And she goes, um, yeah, no. Mm-hmm. Later they do shots and they do a lot of them. These are, there's a lot of shots on that table yeah, for two were. people. I think I at least saw 12 to 14. But I don't think they were filled very, like, I don't think they were huge shots. They looked like tiny ones. I would be on the floor. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. Def. Uh, although when I was her age, probably not. But yeah, no. now forget it. Yeah. We learn he's from Long Island. We learn that he was not a big partier in college, but he had fun. And guess what, Steph? She was a big partier. Are you Did s- you guess that? I would have never guessed. Mm-hmm. Never. Mm-hmm. Never. Mm-hmm. Kind of like she says what's her she's- face. Sorry. Who? Last season when, what's Clint's wife, Gina? Did you know she owned a mm. salon? <laughs> Did like you know, Gina doesn't like gingery features. <laughs> Clint's been on After Party like twice already. I know. But. I never watch After Party. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't watch so, it in real time. That's the problem. And then I never know where to find the After Party. It's a whole thing. I don't either. I only saw clips of After Party, which I'll talk about later. Right. So sorry. she says she's very emotional. And he tells her, like, I love hanging out with you. They seem to be really be hitting it off. They do. I'm scared. Later, that it's not going to yeah, last too. because I think I he's going to get real fed up of her partying bullshit and the immaturity. I'm not scared it's not going to last. I need it to not last because he needs to be free of this. Yeah, I agree. So later they're on the beach and Brennan is – he's like, I love this vacation. I never take vacations like this. And Emily feels like they are just so present. And then I, I do have it all written out here phonetically. She says – I feel like so lovey-dovey and happy. Um, Amy, I'm going to need you to stop right now. No one wants to hear this. Thanks. <laughs> if you could do it in regular voice, the audience would appreciate it. Thank you. And then she says, what about sex? <laughs> like, what is that? Or like, yeah. She See, says you know, sex I'm trying like to do it. spelled S-E-C-K-S. That's how she says sex. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's and, like, well, I think we're progressing. And she's like, I'm just going to let you take the lead on it. And he's like, I really appreciate that. They're fine so far. Yeah. This is boring. Th- this is what's going to happen. They're going to party hardy. They're going to have really good drunk sex. And it's they're going to sober up. And it's going to crash and burn. Yep. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Okay. Let's go to our absolute favorites, Austin and Becca. Oh. Could they be any cuter? Could no, they be any cuter? I love them so much. 
I believe in their love. They have to make it out of this. Me too. I know. And if they don't, I'm going to be so fucking devastated. I don't know what's, I don't know what the roadblock would be. I don't know either. Um, Becca yeah. says she loves Austin's morning noises because he sounds like a pterodactyl meeting with a puppy, a corgi puppy. I'm <laughs> just like, <what? laughs> okay. Does she not know that pterodactyls are my favorite dinosaurs? Of course she does because she's my soulmate. And is she obsessed with corgis? I don't know I what's don't happening know. there. It's, she's okay. just, I don't care. She could say whatever mm-hmm. she wants. I love her. She can. She's our hero. These two are seriously hitting it off, though. Like, I love them so much. He's, so, like, this whole scene, she's just, like, curling her hair. He's eating fruit sitting in the bathtub with his clothes on. While, like, yeah, he was sitting in the tub. Yeah. I'm watching like, her. They're just adorable. I fucking mm-hmm. love these two. They decide to go on a boat kayaking. Mm-hmm. Or no, no, Which that's so they're not cute. kayaking yet. They're actually on a boat, but they do go kayaking. Oh, yeah, they go on Sorry. a boat ride. Sorry, mm-hmm. I'm confused. Mm-hmm. They're on a boat ride, and she's just – they're just, like, really into each other, and they're mm-hmm. just talking so sweetly, and she's telling him how he – she loves that he's so good at reading her cues, um, mm-hmm. like, when she needs something, and mm-hmm. they're just so goofy and sweet together, and oh, she says to him – she loves that she's able to witness what his friends and family have said about him. And yeah. I'm like, that's such a thoughtful thing to say. She has such emotional intelligence. Like, it's amazing. It's mm-hmm. amazing. And he loves. She's so she's so in tune yes. with herself, with how he's feeling. She, she really, and, and she knows how you, to vocalize it. I think that comes from. As someone that has like a chronic illness, you're always Mm -hmm. hyper aware of how you're feeling. So you're always hyper aware of how others are feeling as well. That's just what I think. That makes sense. I probably have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. But anyhow, so I just love that these two are able to talk to each other like this. There's no Mm -hmm. weird shit. They're just fucking great. And my sidebar is that she looks fucking amazing no matter what she does. She's so adorable and I just love her. Mm -hmm. They go out to dinner, and she's flirting with him still, telling him that his face is the best view. They talk a little bit about how um, they grew up. She says that she grew Mm -hmm. up in, like, a normal upper middle class, which I wasn't – She says privilege. She said I have, like, a privileged upbringing. Yeah, and I was surprised by that because I would not have guessed that from her. Would you? Oh, no, I think so. I think so. really? I don't know. I just – yeah. I didn't have an opinion. Like, I didn't have a thought either way, I guess. I mean, okay. So let me just break this down. I don't think she's somebody who grew up wealthy, but I think she recognizes that she was upper middle class and that is a privilege okay. in this country. So I think, yeah I, yeah. I don't think she was like super rich or anything. No. All yeah. right. Um. So we know that he, again, he clarifies from last week. We weren't sure. He is an only child, but he says he grew up normal childhood, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. These two, this is kind of boring, but they fucking just I have a hypothesis here. on him. Oh, okay. I think he was a nerd. Oh, I do too. And yeah. he has found someone who not only appreciates his nerdiness, but, is but finds it super hot. Yeah. And she's probably, because he's probably, he's a good looking guy. He's like a traditionally good looking guy. Mm -hmm. So he's probably dated women who were, you know, good looking women. Mm. But he probably, I don't know how to say this without offending him. I don't mean to offend him at all. What I'm saying is he probably dated like, quote unquote, the hot popular girls in high school. Mm. Or they would at least give him a chance, but it never worked because he wasn't into that world. Uh, maybe. So here he finds someone who brings the best of those worlds together. She's super hot. She's appreciates his nerdiness yeah. and meets him yeah. where it is. Like he is on cloud nine, I guess is what I'm trying oh, to say. Oh, he definitely because is. He has found somebody who really not only appreciates his nerdiness, but finds it hot. And she's and on cloud nine too. And I love it. I love yeah, like he's too. probably felt, and I think he vocalizes this, that he's mm-hmm. probably felt unseen or misunderstood by mm-hmm. most of his ex-girlfriends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. most of us. Join the club. Yeah. Oh, Arthur, so join the club. <laughs> okay, um, Kathy. Keep right. <laughs> they talk, oh, how about, so they're the only ones that I've noticed so far, I think, that have talked about having kids. 
No, he, Lauren and Orion talk about it. Oh, did they? I forget. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, my bad. Yeah. Anyhow, they talk about it. He says he wants mm-hmm. to. She's like, eh, I'm okay with whatever. She's into fostering even, which I thought was really mm-hmm. cool Um, that she says that she – thinks that fostering is a good way to give back to her community. And I'm just like, could she get any more? She's like the perfect human being. How? Well, because then she's like, if I don't have kids, it gives me more time to, know. you know, donate my time and stuff to the community. I'm like, okay, you're I amazing. Know. So later this evening, they're they're by the pool. He's swimming. She's not, again, we mm-hmm. find out because she can't. She doesn't feel up to it. We mm-hmm. see that she starts to cry. He's drinking. He's a little tipsy, and I kind of thought that was adorable. Um, It was a little hot, yeah. It was kind of hot. But they, you know, there's a lot of making out. She's apologizing for not feeling well. She cries a little. He's, like, so fucking supportive, and I just fucking love them. That's all I I can say. He lays it out, like, for the camera, because I think he's doing her solid. Yeah. Because he's like, no, I understand that you just had this surgery, that Mm -hmm. the pool is cold, Mm -hmm. that it's not going to feel well on your – you know, like, he really lays it out so that we understand she's not just being, you know. I'm also getting the feeling that it's not very warm there either because – Okay. They're often in, like, long sleeves – and I'm like, what is happening? You're in Mexico. But then it's like, and it it's must have been like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like it must have just been like a shitty time of the year to be there too. Yeah, I agree. Um, But, you know, they both say that 10 out of 10, they would recommend getting married <laughs> to each other. <laughs> and I thought that was cute. Yes. They talked about death and how neither of them are afraid of dying. These two are mm-hmm. going really deep. And I'm just like – I love really are. I love that they're okay to talk to each other like this. Me too. Me too. And I feel this way because as somebody, it's taken me a long time to get to that place. Mm. Like even when I first met my husband, I was really, you know this, super weird about talking about anything. Like I didn't know how to mm-hmm. open conversations mm-hmm. or to have these mm-hmm. conversations just because I was always so guarded. And I just love that they're yeah. doing it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but we 100%. also learned that she, and I didn't know this either, had like terrible anxiety to the point where like she was afraid to leave her house. Like I'm thinking, yeah. like kind of like agoraphobic a little bit. Yes, which, which she, she doesn't say that, store. but she implied it, and that's kind of mm-hmm. how I took it. Um, but you know, she says she's done so much work on herself, and I just think it's so fucking great because. If she didn't say that, I, no one would ever in a million years have known that about her. So, like, no. kudos to her for really fucking showing the fuck up for herself because I really think she did. Um, well, and he says – I forgot about this part and this goes – I can kind of bend this to work with my theory. He says, I dated women who were quiet. They were artsy. Mm-hmm, artsy mm-hmm. women, like creative women. So he likes that that type. Mm-hmm. But – Everyone he found that was like that was kind of introverted. Mm, okay. And he – and that would explain why he hit the jackpot with her because yeah. she's extrovert. extrovert. I don't know if she's an extrovert, but she's not introverted. Right. She might be a combination where she's a little more extrovert than introverted. She's very comfortable in social settings. I will say that. Yeah, like That's I told I you, say. I had no doubt that she was going to win over his parents. Yeah. Because oh, she's God. one of those people who yeah. can win over any crowd. For sure. Like, so, she walked into their wedding venue, dude, and she won that whole church over. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, I need yep. her to teach me how to be her. I need yeah. Becca lessons. Yeah. That's what I need. We all so, do. So, um, where did I leave off? Oh, so they, and they, they, go they do go kayaking. Oh. It's hysterical. I just laughed the whole time watching them. Like mm-hmm. nothing really happened. I don't even really have much to report on other well, than- Well, they have a, they have they a have discussion a, over what's a boat. Right. And I'm getting there. And basically, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> basically we great. find out that anything that floats is a boat. So she mm-hmm. floats, she's a boat, she floats his boat, he floats her boat, they're floating, mm-hmm. they're boating, and I'm fucking here mm-hmm. for it. The end. I'm here for it. I'm here for these two. They're fucking great. I believe in their love. I do too. I believe in their love. They, they have need to, to last. make it. If the experts don't show up for these two and they don't make it because they don't get help when they need it somewhere down the road. I'm fucking snapping my shit. I'm just saying. You know what we're going to do? You know what we're going to do here at Little Miss Recap? What are we going to do? We are going to start a letter writing campaign. <gasps> to the experts and the producers? Yes. If these two fail, we are starting a letter writing campaign. Oh my You've God, heard I it think here we first. should. 
Mm-hmm. I think we okay. should anyway. We should start a campaign to actually bring the experts back to the <laughs> fucking show. How about that? I told you. How do we I need start eyes that? on their contracts? Mm-hmm. I need eyes on those contracts. I agree. Hey everyone, stay tuned. Little Miss Recap will be right back after these words. Take me, take me down to the Paradise City with oh. the murderer cam. Oh God, you guys! I don't even know where to fucking begin here. It's just strange. I don't know how I feel Something about this. Something has gone wrong. Something's gone very wrong, and I mm-hmm. don't know what it is. I'm still trying to I figure think it out. I told you. I told you what I learned on after party last mm-hmm. week. That he said he asked for someone slender, and she's not tall and slender. I know, but. I'm Dude, hoping that that was just- your husband. If your husband said that to you week one of you guys dating, he, he would not be in your house right now. <laughs> I don't know. I have very mixed feelings about it because mm. in the same way that Clint said or Gina didn't want gingery features or like mm-hmm. I, I can't. I, I felt I, the same way about that shit. You don't know. say that shit. Especially because that's going to be the thing that the person People, is insecure about. I know. I know. Oh, God. All right. Okay, go on. So let's just get into it. Get into Already, it, Already, shit's not good. They wake up in fucking paradise. I should say, Claire wakes up. Cameron's still sleeping and she's not fucking happy about it. She's hungry. She wants her breakfast. She likes her mornings. And he's kind of... You can't see my face. <laughs> it's literally how we looked the whole time. What is that face? Is that Jacob Marley? Huh? <laughs> Isn't this what he looks like? <laughs> I don't. I can't. How do I describe that to I, the I audience? I just. I'll have to post a picture okay. of it. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Cameron says again, she's taking it like a champ. Um, mm-hmm. he's looking for an energy and a safety feeling so that he can make a move on her. And he's just all not he talks getting about. it. It's all he's talking about. Mm-hmm. But watching these two, I kind of see what he's saying. Like he's trying. You see, there are some times where like they try to go a li- He tries to go a little deep. So after they're pa- they go paddle boarding and they seem to have fun. Mm-hmm. But afterwards, like they're sitting on like a dock somewhere and they're talking. And he's like... So what do you want to know about me? And she's like, oh, like anything really? And then she just like starts like launching into like generic stuff. And she's like, I don't know. I'm just seeing him. Okay. So in that conversation, uh-huh. I know, I didn't get she that says something that bothered me. Go ahead. I'll, I'll tell, I'll point it out. Uh, oh, when get okay. There. Yeah. So, so she says some things that bothered me too. Mm-hmm. So she launches into immediately just about work. Mm-hmm. So she says to him, oh, I, like, she's like, oh, I do blah, 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 I'm up there, whatever. And she's like, and you fix bikes, right? Yes. I thought that was really That was not real good. condescending. Really condescending. And he was, was like, undermining. immediately undermining. Yes, that's what it was. It was undermining. Like, she yeah. belittled it in a way. Yes. And she's like, don't you get you. bored that's of that? And he was mm-hmm. like, and I kind of felt really bad for him because he, Almost had to defend what he does. And I for thought a he living. defended it well, he though. He does. He really mm-hmm. does, Amy. I, I think this is where I think we're not giving him the credit that he deserves. I still think he could whip out a knife and murder everyone on that I dog, don't. slay them by the fucking throat, wipe the blood off his hands, no, and walk away. I don't. I don't see it. I think he's just not warm. Those at little those the views of little Miss of Amy Archer do not represent the views of little Miss Recap. Nope. <laughs> We but have just, no evidence that, that Cam is a serial killer. We don't. But like, I just, all right, we're just going to skip right over that because I don't agree. I just don't. Okay. I want to. Right. And I'm okay. trying to. I just okay. don't. He's not getting, okay. he's not getting any credit. Dude, he okay. should not have to say, you know, it's not about fixing the bike. It's about the community and the people he cares about. And he launches She's a fucking into therapist. Like, she should understand this. Yes. And I was yes. like, how? You're a therapist, dude. That's really how you're talking to him too, though? Mm -hmm, Don't you get bored mm -hmm. of that? Is that enough for you? And I'm like, she's not – I'm telling you a big part of why she's not into him is she doesn't like that he doesn't have a career. 
I'm telling you, I can see it. She's using air quotes, everybody. I'm using. We air don't quotes. really think he doesn't have a career. Oh no, no, no! Um, I'm air quoting right. career. No, I'm just yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I agree with you, whereas I think it's amazing what he's doing, I do and too. you think that too. Mm-hmm. She's judgy, judgy McJudgers. He is judging, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I do think that, like, based on where they live, and you know, I'm sure he could probably he might make a very good living doing that, and that could be a and very who cares fulfilling. If he doesn't. Who well, I mean, like, as long as he can support himself and make a decent income, to that's yeah. fine. He doesn't have to be like. Super, no, no. You know what I mean? He doesn't have to match what she's doing. Right. And he saying. doesn't need to be he like a CEO a somewhere. Right. Right. Exactly. I don't know, you guys. It, it's just so fucking weird. So they go to dinner. We see them later in that Ooh. night. And this, this is when shit bad. gets real weird. Mm-hmm. And again, he's fishing. The guy is really trying to connect with her. He's trying. Mm-hmm. He says, mm-hmm. so how does it feel to be on a date with me? And she's like, oh, I'm, your I'm having fun. And again, Th- he's that's another fishing. thing. If you have to keep telling yourself you're having fun, uh-huh. if the only thing you could say on your date is, this is fun, this uh-huh. is fun, this is fun, that's, I know. that's a problem. Like, Claire, find your words, honey. Find mm-hmm. your words. So, like, you could see that he's, again, he's fishing for some kind of compliment. He's fishing for her to say, like, I'm enjoying X, Y, Z or whatever. And she's just not. And it's kind of coming off as rude. Um, yeah. I mean, two things can can be true, right? Like, I think he's ready to snap at any moment. Mm-hmm. But she's also not great. She's not great. Yeah. So, yeah. like, don't come for him and not come for her. Because mm-hmm. oh, I'm coming for her. Just either. wait. Mm-hmm. Um, she does say that, you know, she was happy because she did ask for a goofy person. And she did get that. Um, and she made sure to clarify what Goofy, goofy meant, meant in case there course, was a translation issue. Of mm-hmm. course. But then she asks him what he thinks about therapy. Yeah. And this gets real weird. Yeah. Because I kind of think he didn't answer it terribly. I didn't love his answer, but I didn't hate his answer. He says, you know, he did it when he was younger. He understands why people do it. He thinks it's great. It's just not for him right now. Is basically what I was hearing him say. Yeah, and and what I heard him say is, I feel like he kind of took a more spiritual approach to this. Agreed. And was, yeah, was kind of like, things find me when I need them. Yes. Like, in other words, when the time is right in my life, it's kind of like I was watching Wheel of Time last night. The way back appears only once. Like, and <laughs> we watch it Six too. people listening are going to understand that. I get it, because we um, watch it. Yeah, but it's kind of like... Things come to him. He wasn't saying like, I put no effort into my life and things just fall. There's a difference between saying, there's a difference between saying things fall in my lap Mm -hmm. and things present themselves to me when I most need them. Those are two very different things. Correct. And she's interpreting as things fall in his lap. Right. And I didn't Mm -hmm. get that at all. And I'm like... That was kind of disappointing for me, for her, as a therapist, that she didn't understand what he was getting at. Because I immediately knew what he meant. And she... I'm alarmed by her, like, inability to 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 read a situation. To therapize? (laughs) Yeah. So she says, "Um, so you think the things you deserve just come upon you? You don't have to work for them? And he's like... No, dude, what I'm saying is like, yeah, but like sometimes you're presented with an opportunity and of course you're going to take advantage of it. They're just, she's missing what he's saying. I don't even need and to get into it. it's such an insult to him because is. he has told her how difficult it has been to pick up as a young person, mm-hmm. come to a new country, country. a different mm-hmm. country, carve out a life, start a business, yep. build a community. Uh-huh. Those are very hard things for anyone to do, but a let alone like a 19 old? or 20 year old. Yeah, yeah get exactly. Out of here. It um, was so bizarre to me how how yeah. she questioned that. And like, so he talks about like how, you know, again, taking advantage of when the door opens and whatever. We all do that. Mm-hmm. And she she takes that as him saying that like he has no drive. And that, again, yeah. I don't think that's yeah. what he's saying. She's she not, missed the mark on this 100%. Yeah. Um, so he, and again, so like he's trying to sell himself and I just, I feel so bad for him because he's trying to say like, 
no, we're a good match. Like I'm thinking of it this way and you do like, like he sees it. It's really upsetting Mm -hmm. to me that she doesn't. And I just feel like he's constantly trying to sell himself. I don't think he's the bad guy that you think he is. I don't think Mm. he's, I don't think he's great. I don't think he's an awesome husband. I don't think he's an awesome pick for her. I just think he's different in his communicating and the way that he was brought up. We know he doesn't communicate well based just on what he said last week, on like with his grandmother and shit. And he doesn't even live with his family. They live on the other side of the world. Like we're not giving this guy the I, room. I hear, okay, I'm going to – I hear what you're saying. <gasps> I'm very heated. Okay. I'm very – I'm defending um, him hard. <laughs> No, I, I get that. And I pre- you made a lot of good points. I'm not saying that he's mean or evil without provocation. I just am terrified of him. I don't know if he's going to snap hmm. over something she does to him. Like, I don't know if he's out there murdering people like Long Island serial killer type murder. Hmm. But I do think, like, if he's mean and if he's, I think he can be a real dick. When pushed. Yes. And I think she's going to push it. Yes. She's going to push that button. I can see that. I guess there's a part of me that I think that comes from a place of great insecurity. Hmm. Usually it does. Right? I don't get that vibe with him. No, because his friend, like, they made that joke, like, oh, he, even when he brushes off his shoulder, mm-hmm, like, he's mm-hmm. pumping himself up all the time. But yeah, think about know. it. People that talk, speak so highly of themselves are doing that because they're trying to convince themselves, not everyone 100%, else. 100%. So I don't see him as... I usually agree with that. But I know. With this... I just think you're being super judgy on him because it's kind of funny. Because he's Jacob Marley. Yeah. Like I think he if he, by nightmares. I think if he was different in a like I I don't know I just think you you're looking at him in a different way. I'm not seeing. It. I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. I just get a vibe that they hate each other and one oh, of them do. Might murder the other. Oh, one. I agree mm-hmm. with you. They do not mm-hmm. like each. Well, yeah. I don't think they he, they hate each other yet. I don't think she likes him at all. But I think no, he's trying. I don't see her really putting any effort in though. I think so here's, him being I think he can come off as arrogant. Yes. And that's a turn off to her. Right. But again, and his friends told her that. Like you have to get to know him. Don't be put mm-hmm. off by that. Mm-hmm. But again, she's not trying to get to know him. You never see her asking him a question. Mm-mm. It's Mm-mm. always him initiating conversation, him trying to pull the stuff out of her, him trying well, to in, it, and and I think when he like and I'm all over the place here. But like you said earlier, like we had joked a little bit a little while ago about how he wants intimacy. And I don't even think that he's just talking about like sex. Like I think he's he like. He just wants some kind of reassurance from her. Yes. He's looking for yeah. like a hug or a cuddle or yeah. like I feel yeah. like he wants. I think he wants to bang. But well, yeah, I yes, agree that he also wants But that. I also think that he's looking for some, any kind of affection. And he, because he's seeing it with everyone else and she's not really mm-hmm. doing it. She puts her hand on his shoulder early, like in the group scene or it's like lame. she'll, but it's not, he's looking, he's looking for connection. And I think it's coming off as arrogance and it's coming off as he's just some horny bro. I don't think that's it, though. I think I think, I think we're perceiving it that way, but I don't think that's the intent. And I think I think it's just how we're seeing it. I think, too, that very similar to what happened to Chris and Alyssa. Remember mm-hmm. them? I'm a nice person. Mm-hmm. Um, his friends told her, like, he can be real bossy and judgmental. And that got in her head. Yeah. And everything she saw about him, she saw through that lens. Yeah. I think it was an excuse because she wasn't attracted Actually, to him, whatever. A million percent. That might be happening with Claire as well. Like, yeah. he was real arrogant or came off that way. I know. And she's seeing everything. But that would that would, that would would explain why she would take a statement that he said and turn it to be everything right. just falls in my lap. Right. And like, but there was also a part of her when they were having that conversation that not only did I feel like she was talking down to him, but like I, she was talking down to him is exactly my point. Like, yeah, yeah. Kind of like how you would talk to your kid 
when you're pissed off. Oh, I agree. Them. I agree. Like, oh, you there was think, a little level. Oh, you think yes. you're going to get an A just because you looked at your notes five minutes before that test? Mm-hmm. Let me know how that works out. Like, come yes, on. Yes, there was absolutely I an air of that. I yes. didn't like that. So I like, agree. I know everybody, I like, we're laughing and we're teasing and like people think he's the nutty weird one and he's weird. I, I'm giving him that. He's weird. I think weird. he's going to murder a production assistant. He's I'm not, just going to say that. I don't, I don't think I'm a hundred percent disagreeing. <laughs> <laughs> and as much as I want them to make it, because I do, I, I think it's her. Who do you her. think will murder the other one first? I think she will murder him first. Okay. Slow poisoning mm-hmm. or something? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. Can we move know, on to the other shit show? We could. I just keep talking. No, no, no. That's fine. Guys, weigh in. Am I right? Is Stephanie right? Are we both a little right? Or are we both way off? Mm, could weigh be in. any of those things. Let us know. Let us know. But I, you make some very valid points, and you have moved me slightly off of. He's I'm the telling one you, you guys, pay attention. He's the one mm-hmm. doing the work. She's okay. all lip service. Okay, good points. I'll so Orion and Larry action. are in some real strange looking hot tub slash pool thing, and they're talking about a conversation that they had the night before, in which they decided that they only want one kid, and they would be willing to adopt. He's saying things like, you would be a great mother, and I've only known you for 48 hours, but I could tell because you're very soft and nurturing, Mm -hmm. and that's what I had growing up, and that's what I needed from my mother, which we all know his mother is amazing. I know. I love her. And then they talk about how many kids there are out there who need homes, and, you know, they would really like to adopt. I mean, these people are just amazing. I know. Then he tells the camera his feelings are definitely building, and she, she tells the camera she feels safe with him. Yeah. They talk about how nice their marriage is, how well it's going. They make out a little bit. Later, they're getting ready. Orion watches her lay her edges down. We get a whole lesson Mm -hmm. in hair, which is amazing. And I didn't know that. I didn't know what that meant. And I really appreciated it as like somebody that, you know, I'm not of color. I truly had no idea what that meant. So like that was educational for me too. And she is so fucking beautiful. Like I could just look at her do anything. Okay. So they go out and they find a hammock and they get in this hammock mm-hmm. and I can't even tell you what I would look like trying to get in a hammock. And flipping over, <laughs> holding on, laughing hysterically. Yeah. <laughs> this little meatball on sticks would be like, woof, woof, and I would be flying around the air. Yeah, no. So they find this hammock. They're laying in it so nice and they're talking about gender roles. And she's a little more traditional, traditional. than I thought she might be. Me too. Yes. She's like, you know, I don't want to be the one tasked with doing all this stuff, but I like cooking for my man. Mm -hmm. And I like that you said 80-20 economic split. You know, you're providing the the (laughs) income. And he's like, you know, yeah, I want to do that for you. And, you know, there is a little bit of traditional gender Mm -hmm. roles Mm -hmm. in each of them, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Cut to they're drinking in the hot tub and they're having a conversation Uh. about race now. I, I just want to acknowledge up front, we are two white women. We really, our voices do not belong oh, in this conversation nope. in terms of what they were talking about. Nope. But I just want to relay what happened and then I have just a few very high level Agreed. points. Okay. So she starts by asking if he ever used the N-word. Hmm. And he admits that as a child he did, that he was an ignorant kid and, you know, he used it a little bit and also in song lyrics and stuff like that. But his mom and other members in his community set him straight, told him not to do it. You know, whatever. He says, how about you? And she says, well, I also use terms that I didn't know were derogatory growing up. And he goes, oh, like red skin. So she did not say that. I just want to point that out. She did. She did not say that. She did not. And she goes, no, I never talked like that. And then she first one second you see this look of confusion on her face and then she goes i don't even know what that and then she looks at him and she starts to laugh Uh uh-huh and she goes oh oh i get it like it was it was not a good moment no but i don't think she meant it like that i don't think she did either but it was not a good moment in her defense we have all done something stupid like that. Not about a race yeah. thing, but like yeah. we're like yeah. a light bulb moment. Like you saw that light bulb moment. And that's we all saw it that that her. was. Yes. It yes. was just a light bulb moment. And she was like, mm-hmm. the laugh, I don't think was her laughing at him or at Redskin 
or like right. she was just laughing at herself having that light bulb moment. I think I agree with you. That's I what I saw. You. And so then, you know, he, this really annoys him. He tells her, you could see the whole, his whole posture changed. I and was a scared he, of him. He was, he was really angry. He yeah, was heated. He and he tells her what it meant. And of course, we all know from American history, it was when the government was rewarding people for having Indian scalps, whether they were, and I'm saying Indian scalps because that's what they were calling them in the advertisements in the newspapers. Indian scalps, redskins, $200 per, per- it was, disgusting. guys, if, yeah, I'm just going to say go, go okay. read People's History mm-hmm. in the United States. I'm just going to say that. Bad. Okay. Not so, a proud moment. No. And so they get into like whether you're offended or whether it's a joke. And that's, again, we don't belong in that conversation. No. But I will say just one thing. I okay. thought she made a good point. Okay. Where she said, you reacted to Cam making a similar slip as a white man very different than you did to me as a black woman. And she is not fucking wrong. She, she's not wrong. No. They were very different responses. They were. But, and, you know, then he defends that by saying, well, they were two very different slip ups. And sure. Okay. So well, that's all well, I'm going to say about it. I, know, I don't really want to get into it. You got, you know, I, I will say this too. It was interesting to see this kind of conversation on TV. It was. And I love. I, I was riveted. I love that she said to him at one point, like, because I was thinking this and she said it. She's like, where is the line of being offended? Like, I right. can't figure out where the line is. And I yes. was with her because I couldn't either. Yeah. And I think, you know, again, this is something that's personal to everybody. Yeah. I think, like, where is that? Like he said, it depends on a lot of things, you know, yeah. how there's how it's being delivered, how it's being, you know. But I also, like, I'm not defending either one of them here. But what I'm saying, though, is they also don't really know each other. So Correct. like, Correct. Yeah. If he knew her better. So I think this is something they can work past because I, I think. I do too. I do too. They, yeah. They like, talk about it. Yeah, they both, when they talk with each other, they're both very mm-hmm. responsible in the way that they talk. And I like that they listen to what the other one is saying. Yes. yes. That's huge. Yes. But yep. this was really fucking uncomfortable. This was rough. It was, un- it was uncomfortable. And he was on After Party and I only saw a little clip of it, but. Keisha Knight Pulliam, who's a a woman of Mm -hmm, color, mm -hmm. said to him, like, you really came hard at her and you didn't give Cam that. Like, she she reiterated that. Mm -hmm. And she also said, you know, you admitted to using the N-word and she gave you grace Mm -hmm. and you didn't give her grace. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, it was a tense moment. The cameras were there and everything. Once they all went away, I was able to sit there for a few hours, regain composure, looking to give her some grace on this and, you know, whatever. Oh, good. Okay. So, like, I think the cameras being right in their faces were probably- I'm sure. I'm sure. Adding tension. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was okay. rough, though. I do love that I did- This is totally off topic. Mm-hmm. Um, I love his tattoos. Yeah. I mean, I think he's hot. You know this. I don't think, I think he's, he's hot. hot. But I do, I do. I'm really, I've seen, so he, I, I've noticed a couple of birds and you know that I love birds mm-hmm. and I also have a bird tattoo um, mm-hmm. and I want another one, but I want to like, I'm not usually interested in people's tattoos, but for some reason, well, cause I you feel, know, his are probably really meaningful yes. and I want to so hear I want to yeah. look at his body like, and I want him to tell me, no, I just mean like, I, I mean, so like, do I. well, yeah, <laughs> but I mean like, I want to look at all of them in detail and I want him mm-hmm, to tell me mm-hmm. what they mean. Because yeah. I'm sure yeah. that they all have some sort of significance with his culture, and I just think they're really cool. That's all. Well, I'm just let's talk about next time on because we have some things to try to decipher here. Okay. okay. So they're all partying on a boat. Emily is flyboarding because, mm-hmm. of course, she is. Mm-hmm. And Austin tells the group, like, Becca really has my back. Mm-hmm. And then we hear, Dun, dun, dun. The storm clouds move in. <laughs> Clam, Claire, and Cam are talking. Clam, and she's like, Clam. Clam. That's her new couple name. Like Clam, Clam. Clam. <laughs> so Clam is. is like, things are looking real grim here. Uh. <laughs> so Brennan says um, Emily is starting to earn his trust, but not there yet. Mm-hmm. And Lauren is like, okay, so Lauren and Orion are at a dinner. 
And she says, how do you feel about me having sex two months ago? Uh Uh-huh. He says, if I'm being honest, it kind of took sex off the table for me. Is this the thing that we're talking about in later I think it is, dude. I think it is. So she didn't cheat. No. I think But here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. I think we have the same thoughts, so go ahead. This is a long process. She knew she was going to be on this show. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying whether his feelings on this are right or wrong. That's up to him. I would feel some type of way about that. Yeah. I mean, I want to say that I wouldn't, but I'm the most jealous psychopath on the planet. Like, admittedly, I would 100% be really bummed out by that. And I don't even know why it's stupid. It's stupid because on one hand, you're like, it's before we're married. It's before you even know me. You're not in love with me. I don't even exist in your mind. So, of course, it's not a betrayal of any kind. The flip side of that is, but why do you feel the need to bang around two weeks before or two months before you get married you should be committed in your head, heart, and mind. You Did know what I mean? Know, I don't know. I don't think they know that long. And that that's what we advance. have to figure out. That's, no, they guys, literally only find out like two weeks before. Yeah, but they're applied for the process. They know it's a possibility. Right. But applying for the process and knowing you've Agreed. been chosen are two totally different things. I Agreed. don't think And they I'm know. not saying that it would be a deal breaker for me, but I would have feelings about it. Oh, yeah, me too. Like, I think I would need to talk. Like, I wouldn't just be like, eh, no big deal. You know what I mean? Oh, no. I would probably want to have a conversation about it. Yes. Just to see what the headspace was. But Mm -hmm. to say that it took it off the table, that, I don't know, two months ago, dude? Two months ago? I'm worried he's going to be super judgy about a lot of things. Me too. We'll see see where we go. That's one of the things that, like, so you think he's so great. And how you feel about Cameron is a little bit how I feel about Orion. I think he's great. Could I be married to him? No. Okay. But I think he is, like, I am happy that people like him exist in this world. Oh, my God. Me too. Let me put it that way. A hundred million percent. Would I necessarily want to be married to him? No. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because I would feel like I was walking on eggshells constantly. Well, but he, however, however, that being said, mm-hmm. I'm acknowledging my privilege as a white person right. and I don't have the same worldview as he does. Right. And I don't either. Yeah. So like, you know, he he might have every right to, to feel that way. So mm-hmm. it's it's really tricky it's, area. It is. It really is. Yeah. But I'm just yeah. saying, I don't think aside, I, I really think because I mean, every time they find out that they're chosen it's like oh you're getting married in two weeks like that's when they find out i don't think you know yes she may have applied but how do i don't think you know two months in advance that you're chosen so like we need hashtag journalism to be done on this i'll find out come at us i'm gonna throw this on back to our friends they can do it (laughs) i like that even better guys if you love us please find out how far in advance they know that they are getting married. It's not two months. It can't be because they've been doing every research to try yes, to find out who they're it's marrying. it's two weeks. I'm telling you, it's yeah. two weeks. This much I yeah. actually believe is real. All right. Where do we stand at this point? Emily and Brennan, are they going to make it? Emily and Brennan, hell no. <laughs> Austin and Becca. I want to say oh, yes. Please, 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 please. Little baby Jesus in a manger or whatever. Yes. If you're the real, um, please. How about... Clam. <laughs> no. Big fat no. Here's what I need from from a graphic designer. I need a big clam. With their heads And in for it, its like little, little eyes, pearls. I need each of their heads. Yeah, like the little pearls inside. <laughs> <laughs> or is that an um, oyster? Oyster. That's sorry. an oyster. Oh, the clam has the little eyes on top of his head yeah. in cartoons anyway. Not real clams. Mm. And I need little eyes and each one is their head. All right. I'll, t- I'll have okay. Pat um, on that. Get Pat on that. Uh, Lauren and Orion. Uh, no, no, this is I not going to work. See it because you know not. what's going to happen. I'm going to make a prediction right now. All right, go ahead. In the moment when he was mad at her, talking to her, she was like, "You make a good point. I agree with you. Okay, I get it. She's going to stew. stew. She's going to stew on this." 
and it's not going to go away because she cannot and she should not sleep on the fact of his reactions were very different. Mm -hmm. And the reaction of her with him using the N-word was very different. Yes. And she's going to stew. She's going to stew. She is going to stew. And stew gets thick. And then it forms into a solid club and you beat the shit out of somebody with it. You also, we forgot to talk about how he has a soft bush. Yeah. That What's that weird. about? <laughs> I think I to know, over that in my mind. Yeah, she wanted to know about his manscaping. And I mean, and I would yes. too. That's totally a question that I would ask. I just thought it was funny. I wouldn't ask that question. Oh, I would. I guess I would just assume it's terrible, like every other experience <laughs> she's probably had. <laughs> I would just assume it's terrible. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. 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 Ah. All right, girl. Oh, it's no. been fun. We're gonna, we're guys. We're gonna try to get you your golden batch this weekend. Hopefully, hopefully. we're working on that. We're getting there, and uh, we'll be back next week with I don't know this shit show that we're watching. No experts in sight. None. It's been. We need one of those like work days without an incident. It's been five episodes without a sighting of an expert. I've also decided that I need a new shame bell. For both Why? you and Amanda for always spoiling things on me. Mm. Shame. Shame. Yeah. Shame. Yeah, I agree. Shame. Um, Amanda spoiled Golden Bachelor. Golden Bachelor for you. You guys. And I spoiled everything, everything. for you. Life. <laughs> the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> All right, girl. I'll Love talk to you soon. Moms. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye.